And that's what Elijah, Elisha, they, they would seek out the wilderness. And sometimes God would tell the prophet, go here, go there. And it's an area of wilderness. So instead of just saying that I'm now in a wilderness experience, maybe because of my sin or... Actually, in, back in those days, they would seek out the wow. wilderness to find the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? We it's completely opposite. It's opposite. It's opposite in our modern time that, exactly. that God is saying the wilderness, the loneliness, is a time where you can come and I'll be there with you. This is a pretty big overlook. There's a lot to talk about in this area. Uh, where do you want to start on this one? We'll start with the map that's, okay. uh, I think you got a finger on it. Yeah. As you can see, Jerusalem is on the left side yeah. and the Dead Sea is on the right. And even though it's from the left to right, but actually we are descending down 3,600 feet. Yeah. That's how high we are from the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is the lowest place on planet Earth. Wow. To think about that, that you are actually looking at the area of the Dead Sea, right? Just over there, you can see the beginning outlines of the Dead Sea. And uh, all the way down from sea level to the Dead Sea will be about uh, 1,200 feet. Mm. And that's why the pilgrims back then, when they go up to the annual feast and they would come up, they would say, come, let us go up to Jerusalem. All right, to go down, the man went down to Jericho. The man left Jerusalem to go down to Jericho, fell among thieves, the story of the Good Samaritan. So you, you can see the topography, all right? That every time you go to God, you, you, you're drawing nearer to God, you're going up. Hmm. Not like Jonah, Jonah went down to Joppa, then he went down to the port, then he went down to the boat, and finally he went down into the sea, you know? Every time you leave God, it's down. Hmm. But when you are, your heart is towards the Lord, and even after the first word of prayer to Him, you are going up. You are standing out of your troubles. So I, I feel that even topography itself is a parable that God wants us to learn from. I lift mine eyes unto Jerusalem where my help comes from. I mean, there's so much that you, that clicks when you are here to see even the topography of what we're on. We're on, yes. in essence, uh, Mount Scopus. Mount Scopus. Uh, we're in essence right near the Mount of Olives. We're on the back side, looking east now here. This is kind of north up my way, my mm -hmm. view, and towards east. When you think of the Judean wilderness, it's hard to not think about Jesus and the temptation. Yes. Uh, would have been somewhere, somewhere in, in, this in this Judean area, wilderness, yeah. somewhere. You can see Jericho from here, it's way down there, but the mountain of temptation will be just towards the left. All right, you'll find the, where the proposed site that Jesus was tempted. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful story right there. Um, the fact that Satan tempted Jesus and he succeeded in an environment that was like desert, sparse, nothing there, Jesus obeyed. Adam sinned in an environment of plenty. He was surrounded with all kinds of resources and fruits that delight the heart of man, and yet he fell, hmm. right? So Jesus, the last Adam, succeeded when the first Adam did. By one man's sin, death reigned. Hmm. But for those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, shall reign through Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny that we're here in, a, in what would be called a Judean wilderness overlook, yet I see a very modern highway here, <laughs> a very modern uh, part of the city, some freeways, and wouldn't you know it, two weeks ago, it rained like cats and dogs here. And so everything looks green, yes. you know? And so we're trying to show, <laughs> we're, we're trying to show this barren wilderness <laughs> and it's filled with animals grazing see, and uh, green sheep over and there. grass and- Intended. Okay, the idea that um, the Dead Sea, uh, we're, you know, we're roughly at about 3,600 feet where mm -hmm. we are here yes. near Jerusalem and the Dead Sea at 1,300 feet below sea level uh, is, is an amazing contrast. I mean, the, and on a slightly clearer day than today, you're looking at the country of Jordan, you're looking kind of at the Jordan River Valley. And so Jesus' baptism was just yes, over here. Right over here. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho mm -hmm. just over here. The crossing of <laughs> Joshua. And the children of Israel was also here. Yeah. 
Elijah, Elisha, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. crossing was just here. Yeah, back and forth. We're playing a biblical quiz anymore. You, I said, well, now it's your turn to say something. Yes, David and Anjadi <laughs> hiding in the caves. <laughs> My turn? Right? Yeah, the, the Hebrew <laughs> word for caves. <laughs> <laughs> you said there would be no testing on this show. Okay, okay. we started first. <laughs> okay, but you know, I love, I love the the fact that, uh, that Jesus baptismal. Is, yes, exactly. <laughs> he was baptized in the lowest place on earth, and wow. uh, when, when he came out of the waters, I love the way the Bible writes. I mean, it's not found in your King James Bible, but in the Greek, it says, "God opened the heavens to him." Wow. It's like heaven is waiting, you know, the delight of the Father. And he came out of the waters and, and, and the Father says, You are my beloved Son. Mm. In you I am well pleased. Now, having not done any miracle yet, his first miracle is turned the water into wine in can of Galilee. He has not done any miracle. The Father affirmed him. Mm. And I think we need to do that for our children, especially mm. to affirm them. And then I believe that when they hear the Father's approval, you are my beloved son. I love you, son. They'll go out and win the fight of life. And right there, after that, Jesus went into beautiful? the fight of life. He beautiful? was tempted by the devil. Isn't that beautiful? The Pharisees, the Sadducees would have come down this now modern road, probably mm -hmm. would have just been a trail back then to find John the Baptist, mm -hmm. to say, under whose authority are you preaching? Mm -hmm. He would have been preaching just down here mm -hmm. on the other side of the Jordan Valley there. Yep, and also a pl place called Ainon. A lot of water is there. The Bible says he baptized there. But John the Baptist was pointing to Jesus. You know, all those years of uh, offering lambs as sacrifice, you know, when you bring a lamb to the temple, it's, it's obvious why you are there. You have sinned, mm -hmm. okay? And the priest does not look at you. The priest looks at the lamb. And it's not how bad you are, it's how good your lamb is. Mm -hmm. He'll check for blemishes. Right. And then the lamb is killed in your place. But before that, you're supposed to lay your hands on the lamb. It's as if all your sins are imparted into the lamb. And all this, the lamb's spotlessness and righteousness is imparted into you. And finally, lamb after lamb, year after year, thousands of years passed, then Jesus came. And what did John say? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So when you put our trust in Jesus, it is like you're putting your hands on the head of the Lamb. Beautiful. And all your sins are imparted to Him. And all His righteousness comes on you. And you get what you don't deserve. Because on that cross, Jesus got what we actually deserved. You could put Joseph Prince in the Judean wilderness and all of a sudden grace and life and, and love comes pouring out of you. That's a, a beautiful thought. We are basically stepping through an expedition, uh, expedition promised land to be exact. Walk where Jesus walked. Joseph Prince, our guide. Uh, we're looking at a map here uh, showing Jerusalem, uh, Qumran National Park, uh, kind of the north end of the Dead Sea, the Jordan River Valley behind us. And um, what do you want to what do you want to take away from this area on our expedition together? I think uh, when we come here and look at the Judean wilderness and think about all the the heroes of faith that we grew up reading about in Sunday school, David and uh, you talk about John the Baptist, Elijah, Elisha, yeah. and all the great uh, stories of Joshua and the crossing of uh, the opening of the River Jordan. Imagine God slapped back the river mm. all the way to the city of Adam. Mm. They probably saw a pillar of water standing, moving right in the air, and uh, the crossing of the, the River Jordan here. I think about the fact that they spent so much time in the wilderness. You know, all the men of God, all the heroes of faith, they, they spend a lot of time, David especially, a lot of time in the wilderness. And we think about wilderness in our Western mind, we think of a desert where nothing can grow. But for a wilderness, you know, if, you, if it's parched and all that, you, if the rain comes, you'll find just a few weeks ago, right? Now there's rain, it, it turns green. So that in the Hebrew, it is the Bar Midbar. And that's actually a name of the Bible in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew, it's called Bar Midbar. Which book of the Bible is that, Matt? You said there would be no quizzes. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Bar Midbar is the book of numbers. Okay. Uh, we call it numbers, all right? But actually, um, we go by the numbering system of the, the 12 tribes and all that. But actually, God called, uh, the, on, the name there in Hebrew is Bar Midbar, which is in the wilderness. Wow. Bar Midbar, the Hebrew word, the root word of Bar Midbar is the word Davar. Davar in Hebrew is the word, the word of God. Mm. So think about it. In the wilderness hmm. is from the word of God. So you, you go find the word of God in the wilderness. My goodness. And for us today, it's like when we are faced with like a wilderness experience, we call it, you know, it's a time of wilderness for me. Actually, it's a time where you find the word of God. The word of God is found in the wilderness. Yeah. And uh, the sheep graze in the wilderness because it's a picture of us ruminating on the word of God. They are ruminants, you know, they will lie down. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and meditate, mm. chewing the cud. Mm. All right, cows and sheep, they chew the cud. Do we chew the cud? When we receive God's word, we meditate. You go to a place where you can just like be alone with God at home. You know, it might be difficult. It might be a private room somewhere, but be in that place of wilderness. Or you might be going through a time of wilderness, but in that place, you'll find the word of God. The word wilderness. Mm. We are in Jerusalem together. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking kind of on the backside of Mount Scopus, let's say to the north, to the northeast. I like, Pastor, what you're, what you're talking about in regard to uh, this wilderness. Mm. We're, we're sitting in near, very near Jerusalem. Mm. We're looking kind of north, northeast here the backside of the Mount Scopus, the mm -hmm. backside of the Mount of Olives. And when we're, when you think of wilderness experience, mm -hmm. most church experiences, most pastoral kind of messages on a wilderness means you're not hearing God. That's you're right. you're in a dry That's place. That's why you're in the wilderness experience. Yeah, yeah. just this, you know, the, mm -hmm. it, it's, it, wilderness experience sounds not good, mm -hmm. but it's it's midbar you know the, yes. the word midbar and and mm -hmm. and midbar to the average uh hebrew speaker is a good thing it's yes. where you go to get the word Dabar. of god to, yeah, to hear yes. the word of god and and so it 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 a wilderness experience can be embraced mm. it can be embraced and it can be something that you look to rather than running from. Very good. And okay. that's exactly what David did. He would seek out the wilderness, right? And, and that's what Elijah, Elisha, they, they would seek out the wilderness. And sometimes God would tell the prophet, go here, go there. And it's an area of wilderness. So instead of just saying that I'm now in a wilderness experience, maybe because of my sin or actually in, back in those days, they would seek out the wow. wilderness to find the word of God. Isn't that amazing? We it's completely find opposite. It's opposite. It's opposite in our modern time that, exactly. that God is saying the wilderness, the loneliness is a time where you can come and I'll be there with you. Yes, yes. And Jesus was alone when he was tempted by the devil. And uh, it's something very interesting that uh, the devil actually tempted him by the common denominator. He would say, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, turn the stone. If you are the son of God, do this. Notice that he dropped out one word. He left off the word beloved. Mm. Because the Lord just came out of the rivers of Jordan and the father says, you are my beloved son. But the devil cannot use that word because it's counterproductive for him to remind you mm. that you are God's beloved. Mm. And that's what I believe that we, our responsibility is to tell our people that they are God's beloved, that they are loved. We, we want them to love God. We want them to be people who are loving people. Let them experience loved. We loved because he first loved us. Mm. Unless we know we are loved, we cannot love. Mm. Those who love best are those who are loved best and they know it. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.